to my channel, Inspired by Nature. Today's video is going to be about my very first solo camping trip. It was from two years ago to Joshua Tree National Park. Um, I, originally from Texas, I didn't really get to camp much as a kid except for like Girl Scouts. And as soon as I came to California, a um, long time ago, I started camping with groups and various groups, um, Outdoors Club, if anybody's familiar with them, Sierra Club. Um, meet up and you know then just started to make friends and do group camping trips on our own um, but I always wanted to explore solo camping and so for my very first trip I decided to go to the closest national park to home um, to Los Angeles which is Joshua Tree National Park and I'd been there a couple times before I'd camped there before but this time I wanted to kind of check out different areas um, so I'll get into it in a bit but I camped in the southeastern part of the park which I hadn't been to before and um, kind of explored areas that were a little more desolate. So I wanted to have that combination of the solo experience and the desolate desert experience, but also be close to home in case, you know, something happened or I wasn't into it. I could just, you know, go home and be home within a few hours. Um, and so since then, obviously I loved it. It was great. It, I definitely recommend it. Since then, in the course of the past two years, I've done eight solo camping trips and three of those were actually week-long trips where I went to multiple locations so I think it's actually like 15 different places I've been to if I add them all up um, over the course of the past couple years so definitely recommend it I shared um, one already from this past summer I can link that video below for anybody who isn't subscribed or didn't get to see it um, and then I'll probably slowly work my way through each trip each trip had its own flavor to it. Um, this one is going to be mainly photos because at the time I had no plans to make videos so it's basically just like a slideshow with me um, doing voiceover kind of describing what I did but hopefully you guys will enjoy it because it is like areas that I hadn't been before that are not as well known that you might want to check out um, and yeah if you have any experiences in Joshua Tree or places you recommend uh, feel free to comment below or ask questions I'm always happy to answer questions and as always, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, please like the video if you enjoy it. I'm going to be doing a variety of different ones. Um, uh, besides just travel, I'm going to kind of do some more cooking ones. And just have some interesting ideas to share coming up soon. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Inspired by Nature. Joshua Tree National Park is 800,000 acres, which is slightly larger than the state of Rhode Island. So, I know this is hard to see here. This is just an overview so you have an idea. And here comes my I cat. I just keep going, but my cat might come back on here. Um, so, I entered from over here. You know, this is LA. And um, I had explored this area of the park many times before, but I'd never explored this area of the park. And so I actually got my reservation here at Cottonwood Visitor, um, uh, Cottonwood Spring Campground. So on the opposite side of the park. And most people, when they come to that campground, they just keep taking the tent and then boop, 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 right up there. I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to see as much of the park as I could and really explore areas that I hadn't before. So I came in the traditional way to go into the west side. Um, I went up and around, boom, 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 all the way up here to that visitor center, which I'd never been to. And then I drove through down, 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 down um, to the campground. And it was such an amazing drive. Um, this area of the park is totally different than this area. Um, right here, you can probably see, this is where the um, Mojave Desert and the Colorado Desert meet. And from my understanding, the Mojave Desert is what the majority of like the popular area of the park is, the big, huge rock formations. And uh, then down here is more just like open space and kind of like sand dune washy, uh, just different geography. I have been watching for an opening at the uh, Cottonwood Campground for weeks and there was nothing and then amazingly one opened up on a Saturday night for two nights in the middle of spring break so I swooped that up as soon as I saw it and got really lucky uh, actually is running water there I believe flush toilets so really nice campground um, and then the last piece for me to be able to camp alone was to have my own stove because I'd always just shared stoves at group 
events. Um, but I really love this one. If I can find the info, I'll link it below. It's both propane and butane. And then the pot is really nice too. It's from REI. It cooks super fast, really lightweight. The handle folds up. So I'll just see if I can link that one as well. And um, this is my little oasis in the desert here. Um, just tucked away. I loved my little campsite. First night there was a full moon. So you best believe I did a full moon ceremony. Had my um, singing bowl and some sage and got all hippie on on the, my trip as I usually do. Gorgeous moon under that desert sky as well. Uh, the next day I headed up to Choya uh, Cactus Garden and the Choya Cactus are really interesting. They almost look like a mix of a Joshua tree and like a typical cactus, like a blend between the two. Um, so hung out there, got to see those for the first time. And um, then from there I headed into Pine City. It's kind of a little bit off the beaten path. It's a hike that's supposed to take you to an oasis of um, basically a bunch of pine trees. And um, I got to a certain point where it just kind of cut off. Um, ugh, I really want to go back now, even looking at this map. Uh, it wasn't super obvious. You get to a sign where it just says you're on your own. There's these huge boulders. So being by myself, I decided to turn around. Didn't find the oasis, unfortunately, but was happy to have empty trails. I then moved on to Barker Dam and it was really impressive. It's basically an oasis in the desert. It was built by some cattle ranchers in the late 1800s, I believe, um, to have a place of water for their cattle. And I was surprised how much water there was, how green and lush it was. There was even some people like wading in the water and swimming at one point. Um, so I had never been there before. I definitely recommend going there. Just cool, interesting little trail. And then, of course, the Joshua Tree, what the entire park is named after. Um, the Dr. Seuss-looking trees are so interesting. Uh, they're known for how resilient they are and the life they provide to so many, the resources they provide to so many. Um, Native Americans used to use them for weaving. Birds and different critters live in them um, and survive in them, and then they're just so resilient with how they can spread their roots and survive in the dry weather. Um, and they're actually a member of the agave family, and Mormon immigrants named them after the biblical figure Joshua. Uh, because they believe their outstretched limbs of the tree look like a person guiding them westward to survive. The tallest tree is in Queens Valley at 45 feet, and the average lifespan is 150 years. So in that same Barker Dam area, there's a huge rock. I believe it's called Petroglyph Rock. A lot of people are just walking past it, but um, it's really cool. A little bit difficult to get up into, but then once you're there, it has some really cool petroglyphs and just different formations. From Barker Dam, I traversed up the main road of the park to the town of Joshua Tree, and no visit to the area is complete for me without going to see my favorite coffee shop, Joshua Tree Coffee Company. I love their coffee so much, I always buy it, and I actually brought it into some local stores here um, in my community. Uh, the vibe of the trip was definitely a Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon feel. There's just like something so mystical to Joshua Tree, especially during a full moon. So after hanging out in town, I then went back in uh, the park to Keys View, which is supposed to be the best place to see the sunset. I think it was the first time I'd been there during sunset. Um, got there a little bit early to check out Coachella Valley. Got really cold, so I just threw a bunch of random stuff on. Um, and um, yeah, took it all in. It was just this cool landscape. And of course, those desert sunsets cannot be beat. There's just something about them. Uh, very peaceful. From there, I headed back to camp, catching the sunset in the rearview mirror, and it was that long drive on that barren road. Yeah, kind of cool. Next day, I packed up and headed to Desert Hot Springs, and just south of where my campground was, there is actually BLM land where it's free camping, in case anyone's interested. For anyone not familiar, Desert Hot Springs is a little town that's on the southwest corner, just below Joshua Tree National Park, and basically it's a town fed by natural hot springs, so there's multiple resorts that have them. Um, this time I went to Miracle Hot Springs, which is a sister to Desert Hot Springs Spa. Uh, they're both like $10, $15 for a day um, use fee, and then you can go to the sauna. They have about eight pools. Super relaxing way to end any trip to the area. I always go. Of course, got to catch the iconic uh, windmills in Palm Springs. And then another cool thing about this trip is I got my first National Parks Pass, which if you go about 
three, four times a year, depending on which parks pays for itself. And I always get a stamp in my little passport. Ironically, book. and a bit bittersweetly, the last trip I took was also to Joshua Tree National Park. And it was the day before all the closures went down. So got a stamp in the book almost two years to the date from this solo trip, kind of a bookend to this whole video. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend Joshua Tree National Park. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I've done a couple other group trips to the area, um, staying in hotels and just exploring other trails. So I'll probably be making videos about that, but I hope we can get out there soon and keep enjoying nature. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and hope to see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye!